Hello everybody, welcome. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a test on I'll just show you here on the bench. I'm gonna do a test uh, on different kinds of chamois leathers. Um, I'll give a shout out to Len down in Texas. Uh, a friend of mine down there, we were having a conversation about this and um, a, you, you, traditionally normally people use a, a chamois leather for, for leathering off the rims of their pots. But some people don't use chamois, some people use like this, some other kind of soft material, not leather. I'll be honest, I've only ever used leather, a piece of chamois. But there are people who swear by using plastic. So I've got two pieces of plastic here. This piece, which is basically cut, all, cut off this bag. Number one. Oh, hello. Shield bug. Go away. <laughs> Don't like those. Um, and the other is, I, I was given this, it's, it's fairly soft, it's not as soft as sar saran wrap or cling film as we call it in the UK, but it's, it's pretty nice and soft. I would say it's probably, possibly uh, from dry cleaners or something like that, you know. So I've got a piece of that, which I've cut. So what I propose to do is to test out the two pieces of plastic and the pieces and the and the, this piece of uh, and the chamois. Okay, let's go over to the wheel. I've got some clay ready. Um, just put these guys here for now, and we'll get the camera set up just over here. So the theory, the reason why people say that plastic is better than le leather is because the, the, the plastic uh, pushes down the grog back down into the, into, the, into the wall of the pot or into the lip of the pot. It pushes it, it, push, it, pushes it back in. Whereas, as we know, a sponge, and we might just do a test using a sponge as well. All right, there we have it. I've got some clay lumps there ready. So, I was actually in the middle of making some, these are 14 ounce bowls. So, let's just make something make a bowl so beautiful day today beautiful beautiful oh, and the trees the color of the trees I'm going to show you the, the colour of the trees up there. So these, are what I'm making as, as a sort of, is basically a small, a small footed, a small footed bowl. Narrowish foot, 14 ounces. D, 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 D. Yeah, what I wanted to do with these is do some more hackaming on these. Transparent glaze with an iron oxide, iron oxide decoration. They're sort of freehand thrown, I'm not throwing them to a gauge. I'm kind of just 
eyeballing it, so to speak. Okay, so I'm just going to get this as if I was, well, it's not a case of as if I am, because I am. <laughs> I'll just stick it down the bottom there. So, let us, let us take, first of all, this piece of plastic. So I'm going to wet it like that. Uh, no, for a start, not, it's not as user friendly to use plastic as a leather. It tends to get all kind of... You've got, to, you've got to straighten it out before you use it, you know. So I'm going to hold it just like I, just like I would a leather. And I'm going to just put it over there like that. Alright, well, first thing I notice about using a piece of plastic is because there's no... It doesn't have any body to it. It doesn't have any capacity to absorb to absorb water. So it, I'm noticing, I'm noticing that when I, as I, as I take the piece of plastic and I put it over the rim as if I would like a leather and then I hold it to the rim, it's running, it's running out of water quick, more quickly. All right. But I have to say, it looks actually quite nice and smooth. Let's take the camera down there and have a closer look. Unfortunately, the sun is a little bit. But eh, that actually looks quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be very objective here. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the actual right at the top edge here. The I'm trying to ascertain the smoothness of that top edge um, okay all right let's put it back now then let's move it, just move the move that in a touch let us now take a piece of that other plastic which is this which is somewhat finer First of all though, before I do that, I'm just going to put my fingers on the edge here as if I've just thrown it, if you see what I mean. So he's ready for, for leathering. So he's sort of at the stage when I would... So I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to, I'm going to dip it in the water there hold it as I usually do and just put it over the edge. Well to look at it it looks it does look nicely rounded and it does look actually quite smooth. All right, I don't think I'm going to bring the camera down for you to see. I don't think you're going to see anything, really. Let's take a regular piece of chamois leather. So the difference with the chamois leather is it, it, it holds water in itself. So it's, in a sense, it's, it's self-lubricating. I'm laying it over and I'm holding it to it. And now I'm looking at that. <laughs> yeah, I like, like I can really like see a big difference here. Len, I'm not seeing a lot of difference here, man. <laughs> so the the plastic because it doesn't have any capacity to absorb liquid and hold liquid, you hold it over 
that works. I mean, it does work. Let's just try this other piece. This other piece is not quite so manageable. It has a tendency to to fold back on itself, and you've got to unstraighten it out. I want, I'm trying to be really objective about this. Um, yeah, so when you hold a piece of plastic over the lip, it might have a tendency to want to catch on the plastic because there's, the lubrication is, it runs out quicker because there's no, it has no lubrication of itself. Okay, I could basically say the same with this other piece of plastic. This other piece of plastic is is easier to handle. It's a little bit more user friendly to handle. Um, yeah, as soon as I put it onto there and start, I can feel it kind of ch catching. You know, it's wanting to to pull. Um, and back to the leather. Just in respect to leathers, by the way, if you if you buy a chamois leather and you cut it up, you will notice that the chamois leather varies over the the piece of chamois leather that you get because it's a natural skin. It's some some in some areas it's thicker, in some areas it's thinner. In some areas it's, it appears harder or rougher. In other areas it feels smoother. So you just be aware of that when you're choosing a piece. So I'm going to lay this over. The chamois leather is much the easiest to use. Okay. Um, It's self-lubricating. It's not catching. All right. And I don't see that it's as, it's it's any that it, I, I see it's as just as just as smooth as the plastic. Okay. Which is it to be? In my opinion, the chamois leather is the is the one to use, simply because these are not user friendly to use. They're they're very fine. They 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 fold over, you know, and then you've got to unfold them. The chamois leather is much 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 much. It because why it really I think it's best because it it it, it contains it contains water in itself because it's thicker it has more body and I find that the the pieces of plastic are not easy to use because they're all like that you know you've got to like straighten them out every time and they don't hold any lubrication or water in themselves so they have a tendency for the actual clay to stick and catch on the pot because of lack of lubrication all right that's my analysis of using plastic uh, versus using a chamois. All right. Um, so, Len. <laughs> Len and everybody, there we have it. The good old chamois leather, in my opinion, wins the day. And really, the business about the leather versus the plastic being able to push back down. Oh, what we didn't do, did we? I did say, now some people, I notice, do use a sponge. Not only do people use a sponge in place of a leather, here on the, on the lip, 
All right, now if I use a sponge there, it's very clearly rougher. Plus, plus you notice on the sponge, that was a clean sponge, I squeezed it out, but where it, where it touched the, the, the lip of the pot there, you see how the clay has come off on the sponge. So you need to be aware that if you use a sponge on your pot, you are removing the clay from the pot and exposing the 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 grog, bringing the bringing the grog to the surface, which is you don't actually really want that, especially on the lip of a pot. You don't want to bring all the grog to the surface because that is going to weaken the the rim and the rim is the most vulnerable part of the pot. If you're going to weaken it you're not going to do the pot any service are you? So, so definitely do not use any kind of sponge on the lip here alright you're not going to do the pot any favours. Neither use a sponge to throw with and a lot of people use sponges I notice them on the outside of the pot, the whole way up they're throwing with a sponge. That is not the way to do it. Sorry to say, but sorry all you sponge throwers out there. Well, we're going to stir up a hornet's nest now, aren't we? <laughs> Everyone's going to be writing to me. Oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I think I know what I'm talking about. Um, definitely use a leather on the rim and don't use a sponge. Learn to discern, learn to get the feel. You know when you know when you're running out of water. You know, if you get a bit of experience, you'll realize and and really you want to just try to water properly. And I always always say put put your your two fingers over the pot like that, you see. And then Put the water there. You see it runs off my fingers? It runs down both fingers. And if you have both fingers touching touching the pot when you do that, you'll lubricate the inside and the outside at the same time. Alright. So yeah, some food for thought. Some food for thought. Let me just cut this one off. We'll do one more. La, la, la. We'll do one more. One more. La, la. Well, that was an interesting little test. I now maybe some for some people they may they they may prefer to use a piece of plastic than a chamois leather but in terms of ease of use the chamois is much easier I would say on a on a scale you'd put chamois leather at the top as your ideal You'd have a piece of plastic. If you haven't got a chamois, then you'd use a piece of plastic. Because it, it will work. And the very last of all, uh, using a sponge, which really shouldn't be on the list at all, because you shouldn't be using it. Not on the lip. In my opinion, If you get an air bubble, take your needle tool and, and prick it two or three times and then and then just squeeze it out, you see. Exclude the air out of the bubble. Squish it.
If anybody's after leech treadle wheels, I have one that is not taken. I thought it was taken, somebody bought it, but then they they thought that oh, it was partly my fault because I put it I put it I put it on my Etsy shop but they didn't read the blurb properly and then they they thought that it was free shipping. Which it isn't. It's the shipping's based on your zip code, where you are, you know, and it's it varies. So yeah, but I do, so that wheel is potentially available if nobody, if nobody wants it. I'm, I'm not going to cry about it because I actually, I'll, I'll may probably just keep it myself. Having another wheel is, is, this one's got a bit of a wobble in it because of that. That air bubble sent it, sent it out a bit, but it's all right. That's all right, not too bad. Okie doke. Cut them off. Yeah, these are just little V-bowls. You know, for chopsticks and rice, you know. <laughs> As one does. You can't eat rice with chopsticks out on a plate, you see, can you? Chopsticks always designed really to, to be used in little hand bowls, you know, so you can you can scoop into your mouth. At least that's the way I understand it. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. Yeah, just a couple of those. I'll show you some that I just threw earlier, um, which are they're drying here. These guys, I did them earlier. Um, so always remember, as soon as the, the rims will stand it, invert your pots, okay, so that the base is dry and you get a more even drying. These will be ready for trimming soon. Yes, so, you know, um, what was I going to say? Workshops. I've got a workshop this coming weekend, but we're pretty full. I think we've got six people. And then I have two workshops in November. First one is already full with six people, just about. And then there's one later on in November. I think there may be a couple of spare free, free spots on that one. So if that interests you, that's going to be probably going to be my last workshop uh, here in Milheim. But um, yeah, if you want me to come to your studio, I may be going to somewhere in New Jersey, Madison, possibly, for a repeat workshop um, later in the fall. Uh, I'm not sure certainly about that, but it's possible. Um, what else? What else indeed? Um, I think that's about it for now. Um, something I've just been working on. You, you're familiar with these kind of stands for putting pots on, and they're kind of useful. So I'm going to be making. I'm going to be making some, not exactly as ornate as that, but similar for. For exhibiting your wares in your own showroom or display because having a pot on a stand it lifts it up you see and it gives it it, it, it it shows it off much better it's a bit like having a picture in a frame it looks a lot better if it's in a frame doesn't it and likewise a pot if it's put on a stand it does give it a certain elegance it lifts it and that can be quite nice for certain for certain shapes and forms. Yeah. Okay, folks. Thanks for being with me again. And yeah, keep practicing as always. No shortcuts, I'm afraid. Just practice. Yeah. Okay. Bye for now.